Hey, welcome back to James's Repair Shop. Uh, back on the Thunderbird. I got that uh, bead roller or shrinker stretcher stand built. Pretty happy with it. Um, George suggested uh, that I put some feet on it. I, I agree. It needs something. It's a little rocky on the concrete floor. I'll get it fixed up. But I'm really happy with how it works. So now uh, I want to finalize this area right here. Hopefully you can see this. So what there are, there's a few different components in this area that need to be done. So first of all, well not first of all, but one of them is uh, reconditioning this uh, bracket that goes right here. So that's one thing that needs to get done. It's some welding on it, uh, de-rusting and uh, uh, reprimary. So that's one thing. This little plate that went over this hole needs to be rebuilt. It's pretty thin. So I think I'll just probably build a new one because it's only a rectangular piece of steel. Pretty simple stuff. That's another thing. And then there's this plate that covers the torque box that I had to cut off because it was rusted on uh, this end up here. And it already has the spot weld holes in it, but I just need to make this piece up here and weld it back together. So that's that. Set those two aside. And there's also this area here. So there's a strip, a strip that goes down to here and then comes over. So it basically follows the, uh, the, the uh, structure of the, I'll call it the frame, frame, rear frame rails. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, so it turns right there and goes over here and then up. So it's not a big piece. So I got myself a piece of uh, 18 gauge that I'm going to that I'm going to form into that area. The only thing is not, it's not perfectly flat. This isn't. So what it is, it comes down here flat, <clears throat> but then it dips down and then flattens out again, but it also has a curve in it. So um, there's, it's a compound curve piece, not big piece, but, uh, and pretty easy to form, I'm quite sure. There she is. I got a piece built. Got that, formed that little lip there. Got her curved around pretty good. I mean, it'll, I'll tweak it a little as I put it in. It's a little, a little bit of a gap there, but overall, it fits pretty good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start burning that in, and we'll see how she looks. There now, I got her settled down pretty good. I got some holes punched in it. I rush treated uh, underneath. And now I'm going to prime the back of this and prime the frame. Let the primer dry and then I'm going to burn her in. All right, a little self etching and she's ready to go in. Well, there she is. She's welded in. She's not super pretty. Got some, uh, you know, I can see the weld where I ground it down, but I'm not going to uh, grind anymore. I want to keep as much strength as I can because I am only welding from one side. And I'll be covering that with seam sealer anyway. There we go, a little uh, slathering of uh, red oxide on that piece. And good as gold. And now what I'm going to do, because I need to red oxide this, I'm going to clean this up in the blast cabinet. And I'm going to do some uh, fixing up some of these thinner areas, like you can see right, right there. This needs to be uh, replaced. It's thin. There's a hole in it right there, so I'll probably cut it off. Just put a whole new section in. Doctor up this little lip here and fix up this area here. The spot weld holes I'm not going to bother with because I'm going to be welding them back on anyway. All right, I got her in the blast cabinet. Uh, I'm going to try just leaving the phone on top of the glass here to see if you can see. And I'll get, it's going to be noisy, so I'll probably edit the, uh, the sound out when I get to the editing board. But we'll see what we can do with this.
There we go, all blasted up. I use uh, aluminum oxide in my blast cabinet for doing the steel parts, but there's coming to a time now that I'm gonna have to switch out to glass bead because, uh, well, once I'm done most of the steel parts, the, the aluminum oxide's far too aggressive for uh, white metal and all that stuff and any delicate pieces. So what I do after I uh, bead blast stuff like this to keep the flash rust down, or blast cabinet and stuff. I'll hit it with some phosphoric acid. Just a little, just a brush on. Um, so that's what I've just done. And I use this uh, rock solid efflorescent remover by Rust-Oleum. It's uh, approximately 30% phosphoric acid and water. And that's the only place that I know of other than like uh, paying a premium through like crud cutter and stuff like that for phosphoric acid. That's the only place I know around where I live uh, here in Canada, in Saskatchewan, Canada, that you can get phosphoric acid cheap. $34 for a gallon, 25 to 30% uh, strength. And uh, you get a Canadian tire. They almost always have at least one jug on hand. It's good. It, what it's for is removing uh, haze off of concrete after you've poured it. It works really well. I use it on everything that uh, requires rush treatment. So when you hear me talk about rush treatment and it's not a primer, I'm most likely using the phosphoric acid or the rust converter that by rust check because I can get that easily around here for a good price too. And that's great for spraying into places. But this is for doing bulk stuff. Boom. Easy peasy. All right. So enough chattering about that. I have to rebuild this. Some not a lot of work to it. But uh, some, for sure. And uh, I'll get it primed up and uh, have it ready to go back on the car. Okay, we hit a shop mishap. I went to move the welding machine and a wheel fell off. So I got it propped up with a block of wood and a piece of steel. There now, new set of wheels on the front of her. Well, not new. New, new to the cart. Uh, but a good set of wheels that roll far better than the old ones did, that's for sure. Whew, that was a disaster in itself almost, getting uh, having that wheel come off. The whole thing almost tipped over. Fortunately, I did have the gas shut off in case it went over. Well, there she goes. I got a piece put in there. Got a little end put on there. Fixed up some of the holes. I left some holes because I got a spot welded back in anyway. Uh, double welded it. I'm not grinding the inside there. I ground that because it has to fit down closer to the chassis. But that's it, so now I'm going to put a little coat of uh, red oxide all over it, inside and out. And it'll be ready to go back on the car when the time comes. There she is, all primed up, inside and out. I'll, uh, once it all dries, I'll punch a, a couple of holes up here for spot welds. And I'll need a couple of holes down here for uh, plug welds, rather not spot welds, plug welds. But she's... Uh, that one's ready. Now on to this uh, sheet. So you, if you've noticed, I've already welded that back together. That's all solid metal there. This is the only place that it's, uh, it's rusted out right here. So I'm only gonna replace the spot that's rusted out. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, steps in this piece of steel to make it fit the floor properly. I just wanted to leave it. Plus these weld holes are original weld holes. I just want to leave them best I can. This one will have to be, you know, etched out a little bit. So I'm just going to cut a piece like this just to fix this rotten spot and weld it in. There she is, all patched up. Got the spot welds all fixed up, spot weld holes. She's not a pretty thing, but I'm going to uh, coat it with some red oxide front top and bottom and then it'll have to be welded back in here because I cut that right off altogether and then spot welded back in or plug welded back in rather I keep saying spot welded I'm not using a spot welder so there so I'll get her out and we'll I'll get it primed up and uh, put her in oh yeah for anyone that's a numbers person this is on stamped in on the bottom of this to the back side you can see the bumps on the top but you can't read it so on the top but uh, 5, 19, 20 is the uh, stamping for this piece. 
There she is, primed on both sides. And once she dries, we'll get her in place. This is all welded in. Now it'll be this piece over there and that little plate. And actually, I didn't rebuild that plate when I started looking at it. It really wasn't rusty. It was just a thinner piece of metal to start with. And this one already has the alignment uh, spots on it. Had some little tabs that went down to align with this hole here. So I'm just going to, I recoded that so they're all primed up. <clears throat> this one's primed. That one's ready to go on, but I'm waiting for this to, to dry off. And that one to dry, and then they'll all go on in place. She's looking good. And then once that's done, this torque box will be done on the, on the inside. There she is, all welded in. Nice. A little coat of uh, red oxide on the welded areas and she's ready to go. I would say if you're not a seasoned welder, just a little tip, welding this 14 gauge and joining it, you might want you know, make sure your, your heat's up good and high. Like a mine set on midway for this welder to, to uh, tack that in. That's really the only thing I can say is make sure you have the penetration. It is a piece of the structure so uh, over here on this it still needs to be done a little better it's not perfect I don't like it but I'm gonna be working in that area anyway so I'm not too worried about it so let's go around to the other side and have a look and there it is from this view so it looks pretty factory actually I think now I haven't decided yet but I believe I want to paint the whole inner body uh, the white so this will all be covered, it will be sanded and then painted. That's my plan right now, and we'll see how I feel later. These only came, for the most part, were red oxide, but there was white. Like you can see it around in different places, but it was thin. But uh, for sure it will be red oxide, and I would really like to see it in, in white, the whole thing. It makes a nicer job. These fender wells are these uh, wheelhouses. It looks like someone actually went over and painted them silver at one time. And I think that was just done by hand. I don't think that was a factory thing. So I'd like to have all those done in white at minimum. Maybe not where the carpet goes, but we'll see. White's not an expensive paint, so compared to like reds and stuff like that. So uh, maybe I'll just buy two gallons and go at it. Anyway, I'm gonna call it quits on this video for now. And I wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas that celebrates Christmas. And uh, anyone that's not a Christmas celebrator, you have a happy holidays, just the same. And everyone stay safe and uh, enjoy the season. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.